Benchy builds bridges bolstering burrows, Elagoo early erroneous extrusions, and bamboo bumpy barriers. All this and more. Printfix Friday, episode 180. Let's get into it. Starting off, the news that if you haven't seen, you have seen it now. The Benchy is in public domain, which means you can use the Benchy however you would like. A lot of you that don't know and might be wondering, Grant, what the heck are you talking about? Well, we did an entire video all about the 3D Benchy and the issues that were popping up. And if you do want to take a look at it, we'll card to it so you can take a look. But because of videos like ours and probably more specifically, you know, the one that's actually referenced on the page, Mr. Zach Friedman, Voidstar Lab himself, who did a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal video on the 3D Benchy, which if you do want to take a look at it, we'll link to it in the description. All about why it really wasn't NTI's fault. This was something that printables just had to do. And to counteract this, NTI, with the help of the former owners of Creative Tools, Daniel Norre and Paul O'Keefe, they got the Benchy to be put into public domain with an official press release from the NTI group listed right here talking all about how the Benchy's going into public domain and how this even occurred in the first place where when Creative Tools was acquired, NTI became the custodian of the Benchy, but they had no idea. And you can see in January 2025, rumors surfaced that remixes of Benchies were being removed from printables due to enforcement on the original list. However, NTI did not initiate this action. Prusa Research, the company behind printables, later confirmed that a third party report, not NTI, prompted the enforcement. NTI clarified it has not sought to remove downloads or derivatives of the model and had not taken any legal action in this regard. There you go, your official statement of the Benchies free, go have fun, you don't have to print benches and call them boaties anymore, you can go back to printing your boats that don't float. There's something to note here. Mark your calendars for April 9th of 2025 as 3D Benji celebrates a 10 year anniversary and a special surprise is planned for the community to commemorate the milestone. So we're gonna be following along and let me know, do you guys want us to get Paulo and Daniel on a podcast? Maybe the weekend right after this announcement, we could talk about everything that's happened, talk about the Benchy, the history of it. I'd love to know if you guys wanna see it. I know we certainly do, but do you? Love to know down on those comments but this is what we were all hoping for that the benchy is finally free everything is good to go go have fun making your robotic benchies and your you know benchy fleets of army militarized benchies and such glad to see that this issue is fully resolved thank you to all of you that have put out videos about it and especially the ones that have remained level headed i'm going to specifically mention zach because i feel like he and i were the only two that put a lot of research into making sure that we did it all correct good job zach proud of you and i'm proud of everyone else that helped make this into something where we got an answer it's not often where the internet gets pissed off and all of a sudden we get an answer pretty quickly but it is really really nice to see when that Speaking of really nice things to see when it happens, my name's Grant, this is 3D Musketeers and Print Fix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose, and if you are dealing with a printer that you're having issues with and you do want to get it back up and running as quickly as humanly possible, you can reach out to us on all the social medias, you can tag us on YouTube, that's my favorite way these days, put us in the description or in the title of a video and we get notified of it, or comment, I think we get notified when people comment with our name, maybe we do, maybe we don't, but at least minimally tag us in the description of videos we definitely get notified about that and it's a great way for us to help out fellow creators hey maybe send a little bit of love your way as well we want to help you because we believe that printers that are sitting when they could be running parts especially if they're supposed to be running parts it's not a great thing if you have any questions you can reach out to us social medias email all that kind of thing Links down below, you know where they are. Moving on, we got a bamboo here saying, can anyone help me figure out the cause of the print quality drop? We've got two pieces, identical parts. One of them looks like crap. The other one doesn't. Why? The vast majority of people are gonna instantly say, oh, it's moisture. It doesn't appear to be moisture to me. It appears to be something related to temperature. We can also see the top comment here, which I think points out a very, very good thing to note. If you've re-sliced it, 
and you're using an updated Bamboo Studio or Orca Slicer, it handles overhangs differently now. So the overhangs could be different. We don't actually know because we have no further knowledge as to which one is new, which one is old. I'm assuming this is old, this is new, and it could be because of that new G-code settings that they've implemented into Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer. First off, don't use Bamboo Studio, in my personal opinion. Go use Orca Slicer. It's way better. It's community-driven, and you're not going to get locked into using a slicer. Go use Orca Slicer. We prefer to support community products where we can, and we hope you do too. I do appreciate that they've mentioned this, because it's not something that I had initially thought of. Initially, the things you would look for are, let's make sure our cooling is good, let's turn down speeds a little bit, let's make sure our temperatures are correct, because we are printing a little matte here, and it looks like a little shinier here. So it could just be a cooling thing. We don't actually know, but I think the actual slicer itself is probably a key part to this, especially if they've resliced it. I would try printing this old G code again and seeing if that solves anything. If it does, well then hey, check what's changed from slice to slice and see what is different. If it is the exact same G code, it is likely now an environmental issue with the machine itself. Is it considerably warmer? Considerably colder? Is it considerably more humid? All of those factors, while it isn't likely wet filament, can impact the quality of a 3D print. That's why we like enclosed machines. We don't actually know if the bamboo is an A1 or a P series or an X series where it could potentially have an enclosure. If it does, hey, that can help. But if you're printing PLA, unless you're running a Prusa Core 1, you often cannot print with the door closed with a machine with PLA. How can I solve this first layer problem? It's repeatable Neptune 4 Pro. Instantly, we see a lot of people saying, hey, let's make sure your bed's clean, make sure all of that is good. And the user said, great, my bed is clean. They have the lines running parallel to the Y axis where the nozzle to bed distance doesn't match the rest of the bed. They had an adaptive bed mesh before, but it doesn't register the slight height differences. And as the replying person says, you gotta make sure that you save the actual bed mesh. If you don't save the bed mesh, it's not gonna load it. These actual lines, from what I can tell, are due to a lack of adhesion. The rest of the bed actually looks pretty good, although we might be a little bit close. Yeah, it actually does look like it's a little bit close. Let's make sure to scrub that plate. I know you said you did it, do it again. Hot water, dish soap. I don't want any like hand stuff, like moisturizers in it. Go get Dawn dish soap hot water, scrub that build plate like it's going out of style, and then wipe it down with Windex in between prints or some sort of glass cleaner with ammonia that'll get rid of any grease or oil that have touched it. This is a big flat surface, so you're going to have more trouble than you might think. Check your wires to make sure there aren't wires getting stuck anywhere, and because it is happening in the middle of the lines, also check to make sure you are not over extruding. What can happen here is that you're getting a little bit of buildup, a little bit of buildup, and it's building up on the side of the nozzle. And then all of a sudden, boom, it gets knocked off or it pushes down toward that build plate at these areas. We've seen this when the machine is potentially over extruding. And if we look you might be over extruding a little bit. Now that could also be you're a bit too close, but it is a textured bed. You want to be a bit too close. We've talked about this. We'll card to that video so you can take a look. We would first try cleaning that bed. We would then raise our Z offset a little bit. Make sure the bed is properly warm for the material that you're using. If it's too cold for PLA or PETG or any material, it just doesn't stick all that well. PLA can stick to a cold bed, but it does prefer a little bit of heat between 50 and 65 when it can get it. PETG, if it is not a warm enough bed, it will absolutely look like this. And even further, if your hot end is not hot enough, your parts will have issues sticking when the machine starts to get up to speed as it's doing those long extrusions. But you can also verify that your extrusion multiplier is set correctly by doing a very simple test. Measure out 100 millimeters of filament from the entrance of your extruder, 100 millimeters up. Tell the printer to extrude 100 millimeters and see, does it actually extrude 100 millimeters? Make sure that your extrusion multiplier is set to one because often printers set it to 0.95 when they're printing. So make sure that it is set to one when you do that test. And 
if it comes up short or it comes up long, there are calculators online. We'll link to one in the description so you can actually just calculate what your new steps per millimeter need to be. It is not often that that is the issue though because most modern-ish printers come reasonably well calibrated out of the box as far as extrusion goes it could be flow calibration or p factor but i'm not going to go down that road yet we want to start with making sure the bed is clean our temps are consistent and we're actually having decent steps per millimeter but i have a feeling that once we get that bed really clean we get our z offset set correctly and we make sure that our temps are right everything else will work just fine from there. If you are still experiencing this issue, make sure when you look at your bed mesh, which if it is a clipperized machine, you can check it inside of clipper, mainsail, fluid, one of those. I'm still a clipper idiot and I'm still learning. I'm sorry, but you can check it inside of there. And if your maximum deviation is more than like half a millimeter or even over a millimeter, it might be time to go ahead and re-level the build plate. It's a pretty easy thing to do on these bed slinger 3D printers. So if you do need some help with that, let us know. We can make a dedicated video. We have made one in the past card to it, but I do really want to look at revamping those. But what do you guys think? Let me know in those comments. I think it's dirty bed with a little bit of over extrusion and maybe not the right temp. But I'd love to know your all's thoughts. It's one of the favorite things about Printfix Friday is we get assistance from you, the community, to make sure that we're staying on the right path. And if we're not giving right advice, we can correct it. And last but not least, please help my prints all look like this on my brand new P1P. So it's a Bamboo Lab P1P. We've got some parts that are just not holding well. The layers look absolutely terrible. Thing does not look great at all. We can see the user posted a photo here so we can see how they're actually doing everything. This is not the best way to print something like this. I know if you want extra strength, printing it at a 45 can help, but the strength for this, you really just don't want it to flex too much. Printing it dead flat will be a lot easier. This is a problem that we often see with brand new users. They're using stock settings, they don't know what they're doing, and they run into issues where this can be a bit challenging. This is tough even if you know what you're doing to really be able to fix it. We've got people here like a top 1% commenter saying, I don't think it's stronger at that angle, and it's not ever going to print well that way. I would print it flat, and if you want stronger, use PLA plus or PETG. Print saying, no thank you, I'll only use PLA. To be clear, PLA plus is often pure PLA, with regular PLA now becoming more of a mix with like tall and other additives to make it easier to extrude and faster, therefore cheaper. Now, they are using dead stock settings. And so when we look at these type of failures, specifically this one, we can see a lot of lines. Parts are not attached very well. It's a very, very, very thin part. I would absolutely print this thing flat. I recognize that it can theoretically be stronger at this angle. However, the printing issues that you will deal with, with a part like this, with such a low contact point to the bed, just results in so many other potential problems with the print itself. Print it flat and let's see if those issues do persist. If they do, then let's look at adding some temperature to it. PLA, especially when you're printing fast, likes more temperature. 230, 235, 240 even, if you need to. But, you know, slowly work that up. And not all materials are created equal. All PLA is not created the same. And a PLA from one brand versus a PLA from another brand is not the same. We're gonna be proving this to you guys. We are working on designing and building a test rig for this exact thing. Somewhat similar to what Stefan does with CNC Kitchen and his test rig, but on a much, let's go with larger and Florida man style scale. We're not testing small parts. We're gonna test really, really big, strong parts so we can determine where things start to fail. The rig will be able to handle very, very high loads. I'm excited for that because it helps us better understand what sets materials apart from other materials. Because again, not all PLAs are created equal. Sometimes they just need more heat. If you do wanna maintain this particular printing angle, fine. Raise your temps and be careful 
here, especially around the buttons and the D-pad, because that is so thin, you are likely going to run into issues with it being too weak in those areas. And certainly when we're dealing with that connection point, if it was flat on the build plate, this would all be homogenous and much stronger than the small little surface area that we have here. Yes, it would make the actual vertical walls themselves, these thin vertical walls, considerably weaker, but there are ways to deal with that as well. I hope it helps, and please don't give up. I know that 3D printing can be very tough, and I know, especially when you're new to this and you see all these people getting great prints, and you're not getting great prints, it can really, really feel like you're the problem. You're not. You got this. If you need help, you know how to reach out to us, or if you watch this far into the video, you know how to reach out to us, so we're always here to help. And who's also here up? All the awesome names listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. And hey, at the $10 tier and higher, there's a lot of us hanging out in our private Discord server where we do give out help all the time. And where I'm hanging out live multiple days a week with the crew over in our private server. So if you do want more access to the work that we do, if you want to see behind the scenes and get involved in projects before they become public to the rest of the world, you can join at that $10 tier and higher. If you've enjoyed this video so far, you'll enjoy the rest of the Print Fix Friday series listed right below me. Now 180 episodes deep. We've done the full turnaround. Now we got to keep going to that 360 mark. Thank you all for watching. If you have enjoyed it, leave a like, get subscribed. That's all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. I'm sorry the cat didn't show up this time. She's in her tree looking at me. She knows she should be here. I'm sorry. See ya.